Hey, this is Sandy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase it all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. For this week's story episode, we are going to be talking about a component that I'm pretty sure is very important to work-life balance. Not just pretty sure. (laughs) Very sure. (laughs) And that is boundaries and i think the best part about this episode is it's not just setting boundaries but also how people feel about boundaries because it's so i feel like most of the time we get we ask for stories and we kind Mm -hmm. of get the general theme Mm -hmm. of people along the same lines yeah i feel like with boundaries we have literally all over the spectrum Ooh, interesting we have people who are very hard one way and some people who are very lax the other way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the beauty of, honestly, what we share here. Yeah. And what's the whole point of sharing all these stories is all the different perspectives and just that there's no right answer. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's tough because ath- especially like in a traditional setting, like athletics is such a non-traditional job. <laughs> right. Like it is not a nine to five. You can't just really clock in clock out i mean some people manage to create a system where they can kind of do that right but it's not like that just traditional frame of mind of just like oh well i'm not i'm not at work no work right sometimes sometimes some work does bleed over a little bit exactly and i think it just is what you're comfortable with so um i did include a gem from jen in this episode and it is actually our first one i thought it was perfect to tie in Kind of what I just said about the multiple perspectives and I'm just going to give you a little hint. She just talks about how boundaries changed even for her throughout her career. Do you want to read this one? Yes. So Jen says, I think that the longer you're in this field, the more your boundaries change depending on who you are, what stage of life you're in, and the overall satisfaction you have with your job and career. I'm pretty sure that most ATs would be horrified at the seeming lack of boundaries that I have with my athletes, but it works for me. That's the key word. Yeah. In this entire episode, I think we just have to keep going back to, it works for me. Yeah. Do some of them have my cell phone number? Yes. Do they abuse that privilege? Absolutely not. Also, WhatsApp is a super convenient way of communication for me and my athletes, especially because I have so many internationals now. Yes. I, I, yes. When I had a lot of international athletes, yeah, WhatsApp, man. That's where I was at. Lived on that thing. My boundaries have changed over the years because of the way my athletes see me. When I was much younger, I definitely had to be more careful about contact with athletes of both genders because of because our ages were so close. Sometimes you have to get a little burned to wake yourself up and realize that you've let things slide a little too far. Luckily, the particular incident I'm thinking of was resolved by a conversation with a witness. I was fortunate. Nowadays, I'm seen as more of a mom figure, particularly to my internationals who are so far away from home. When time permits, I do everything from helping them navigate school school stuff apartment hunting, moving on to their next school, I get a lot of geography questions. (laughs) And most recently, how to plead not guilty to a speeding ticket and opening a bag of fruit snacks. Interesting. (laughs) Opening a bag of fruit snacks. Yes, all around. (laughs) Like I said, this works for me and it doesn't interfere with my time away from work. I like the occasional joke or story from them or pictures that they send me from home. I'm not sure where I'm going with all of this, but the way to set your boundaries is to make sure that you command respect. That comes over time and being clear in your communication with your athletes and your coaches. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The doesn't for me tends to land more on the coach's side than the athletes. And the coaches are the ones who actually stay. The athletes are the ones who graduate. (laughs) Yes, that's very true. It just goes back to building your own relationships and figuring out how you want to set those. Because you, even in real life, set boundaries with your personal life. Yeah, 100%. Like, you wouldn't let let your personal life necessarily bleed into your work life and let it take over. So, it's the same thing, except that 
most of the time put our personal stuff Mm -hmm. over work yeah you know so it's it's just a little bit different (laughs) in that sense but yeah i mean you get the sense yeah i mean yeah like i i like my athletes have my number you know like and it's not like i'm like you okay everybody hears i mean some people do but right right but like i don't care that they have it if anything i'd rather them have it because i rather know ahead of time what's happening like oh something's going on hey i'm at home and like some emergency kind of situation is going on or something that they're worried about yes i would like to know as soon as possible and right. let me help you through that situation then joe schmo webmd or right i'd rather be right. the one to kind of help with that and get ahead of certain things um, and I, and I think that's true. Like, I think a lot of the athletes really do respect it. Like they don't just text me like, yeah. a lot of times. Like they, they're only going to message me if they have like a question. Right. Right. And if it's just a random text, I'm not answering it. Exactly. Um, I did ask about, I, I asked several questions obviously for this episode, but also taking with a grain of salt, knowing that these are from all settings. Yeah. Um, so it's, I feel like we heard a lot more from college ATs, Mm -hmm. but I know that like secondary school ATs have, um, probably a lot more boundaries, I would say than college ATs. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, I did ask one of the first questions, do you give out your personal cell phone number to coaches and or athletes? 53% said both coaches and athletes. Okay. So the majority yeah. of people actually do give out their personal cell phone number to both. Yeah. Um, 37% said coaches only. Um, 10% said I have a second number to give out, like Google Voice, the work phone, et cetera. And only 1% said they never give out their number like whatsoever. Having a work phone would be cool. So we do have a story about that. Okay, cool. Actually, I think maybe more than one story. I, don't, cool. I, don't, I can't remember. Actually, kind of going back to what Jen was saying uh-huh. about like boundaries changing I used to never give out my cell phone number. And part of it was I started a lot in per diem. Yeah. So it's like, well, actually, I started in performing arts where they they were employees. Yeah. And it wasn't like that wasn't something that we really like that was a very like nine to five job. Yes. Yeah. And so it was it was a lot different than you would see like if I were like at a performing arts college, for example. But um. And then moving into per diem, like, <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be giving out my number. Yeah, no. Um, so then moving into, and then into high school where it's like, okay, again, like, I'm not really going to be giving yeah. out my number. And, and again, if you, if that's like for you, then, you know, I'm not judging you, but just for me personally, mm-hmm. that's, and so when I went to the college, um, I just kind of stuck stuck with that and like my coworkers were kind of the same. So we were just like, you know, um, just kind of following yeah. each other. Um, now is actually, I actually do give out my cell phone number pretty frequently. Mm-hmm. I would say probably most of my athletes who get injured have my cell phone number, but I really don't have anyone who abuses it. Yeah. I think they're all pretty respectful about it. I have had one kid who called me. Um, I was on campus, um, but it was just really random. He <laughs> called me just to ask if he could come into the athletic training room. Um, but it was like a, a day off, but like it was like in the summer. Like, yeah. So it was just like that was the only time that sticks out to me that I'm like, I have you're not in season. I don't yeah. know who who even. Who are you? Yeah. I didn't have the I don't save the numbers, so. I was like, I don't even know who this is. Oh, yeah. I definitely haven't saved, <laughs> saved my athletes' numbers. I've been like toying around because like sometimes I go to text someone. I guess I can go back to like EMR and like yeah, exactly. look, look at their cell phone number and then and text just them. Just search it in there. That takes so long. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't save their numbers. I did toy around with like trying to figure out how to put it into the contacts uh-huh. like separately or like maybe like typing like SA first, like yeah. student athlete. Uh-huh. And so then all of them say SA. That's a good idea. Yeah. But then I'm like, "Mm, but then do I want, I don't know. Do I want all that on my phone? Yeah. Too much work. (laughs) Too much work. We're not, we're not about that. So uh, I'm starting with a a big yes from Sarah Y. Big yes. 
I give out my personal number to coaches and athletes. If someone is injured, I want to be able to reach out and get in contact with them. I also want to keep everyone in the loop with injuries. I want athletes to be able to come to me with injury-related questions and concerns. Exactly. Yeah, that's... Exactly. yeah. I tell them from the beginning my number is not for, hey, how's it going? I also tell people I'm a 24-7 AT, not a 2-7 to AT. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. That's what I said. Yeah. Um, especially because... A lot of times, I mean, again, it goes back to your relationship. Like, w- what kind of AT do you want to be? Because if you mm-hmm. if you don't want to be the 24-7 AT, no, one, have to. no one's telling you you have to. <laughs> and that's okay. Right, exactly. Um, but I really like that idea that, you know, this is this probably goes beyond, her athletes probably go and reach out to her beyond when they graduate or mm. when when she's not their athletic trainer anymore yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it just goes to that full relationship yeah like i said i i rather get ahead of things and know things when they're happening like when i have a athlete who hurt their hand punching a punching bag like <laughs> i, I kind of want to know like oh yeah you should be go getting an x-ray or hey right, you know what right. we could pro- you know it doesn't look like that like do this and then we'll see you tomorrow Right. Kind of thing. I like to know kind of what's going on. Most of the time I give out my number when they're either going to see Doc, when they have a concussion. That's a big one. I mm-hmm. feel like most people would yeah. agree with that one specifically. Um, when, if like they're going into the weekend, because um, like let's say like football season, like something happens on Saturday, I'm not going to see them Sunday. Yeah. So I kind of want to know like, hey, can you let me know tomorrow morning how you're feeling? Yeah. So I can be prepared for Monday. Um. Just, you know, because of pure load. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it it just depends. Like, it's not like I'm giving out my number like five times a day or anything. Yeah. It's just for injuries. So, and and that's what I found has worked for me, and mm-hmm. that's what you've. And honestly, like I remember when you used to give out your phone number, and you'd be texting athletes, and I'd be like, "I'm not going to do that." Yeah, it happens. It does. You, you get sucked in. You do because it is nice. Mm-hmm. It is honestly, nice. I can't. But here's the thing, though. Like, I'm trying to think. I think right now. I I've not had any athletes text me this week. Nice. I I don't think I had any athletes text me last week. So like it's even that like yeah. I mean it's not football season. <laughs> yeah, we, true. But we do have twenty one other sports going on. Yeah, yeah, true. Most of the time I get it like during the day, and and because like sometimes like I most of the time I'm in my athlete training room in the gym, but then mm-hmm. sometimes like I have to cover the other athlete training room. Uh, that's when I normally get texts during the day. Are you in today? That's yeah. That's the number one thing I get. <laughs> are you in today? What time are you gonna be in today? Yeah. Um. So one of the most popular answers that we got was Google Voice. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Which I also played around with because I didn't originally want people to have my own phone number. Yeah. But then I didn't really understand it, and <laughs> <laughs> I was like. It just goes to I because I didn't I didn't know there was a whole app thing. I was like, it just goes to my phone, and I'm still texting in my messages. Yeah, like it was not making sense to me, right? Well, Francesca P put it all together very nicely. Said, I use Google Voice because parents are more inclined to pick up from a familiar area code. With a New York number working in Florida, parents would never answer my calls. It also <laughs> keeps everything organized, so work messages don't get mixed in with my personal pros i like it because everything is in one place it's in its own app but for other people it just shows up in the regular messages it will be a green message even if you have an iphone though since you're using google voice that's a big bugaboo for some people (laughs) right cons it takes a couple of extra seconds to call out coaches do have both my numbers i didn't necessarily want them to have my personal number but Google Voice doesn't allow you to be in a group chat larger than like seven people. Oh, really? That's weird. It didn't work out for the group chat for wet bulb globe temp or other weather updates. Oh, that's weird. So now I'm like, oh, that's kind of intriguing. I mean, I've already gone to the point of no return. Like, I just, 
you can't go back now right i was actually messaging someone about that they're like yeah like it's such a good idea but my number's already out there yeah it's too late you're too far gone right i had a preceptor who was like at the beginning of the of the season meeting she was like if you need my number it's out there yeah yeah she's like i'm not gonna give it to you but if you, you need it you can get it yep there's a way yep I just don't even mention anything, and then it's a case by case. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. I mean, a lot of times, I don't, I don't like telegraph it. I don't like put it all out there. Oh, did I say also for X rays? Like if I oh for Doc, but yeah. also if I send someone for an X ray, I'm like, I want to know right now. ASAP. Like I want to know ASAP. I want to know. Yeah. Right. Right. Send me a picture. Send me your paperwork. Like. Yeah. I guess they could email me, but. I feel like okay, sometimes half, my half of them don't know nah, how to work their nah, email. You're right. I've had someone who emailed the entire body of the message in the subject line. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Like I opened it because I like saw it on my phone and then I opened it and it was just like, what? what? What is this? Well, it said this message has no content. And I was like, excuse me? What? Okay. And then I like look and I'm like, oh. Oh, it it's does. All right here. Yeah, it does. It's just in the subject line. Yep. Well, that's what it was about. Yep. So this next one actually is part of the reason why I haven't, why I didn't give up my number for so oh, long okay. either. Do you want to read it? Yeah, this one's, this one's by Zoe H. All of our athletics teams have a team group me where our coaches, athletic staff, and SID are also in to communicate things. If I have a team announcement, I can post it there, or if I need to contact an individual. Or, if they need me, then they can direct message me. Our athletics assistant works all the magic. I still have all coaches and admins sell, and that's how I communicate with them. All the coaches at my small college are part-time, so I mostly call or text them to communicate. I also will email them as needed. I used to give athletes my number just because it was kind of the norm working in the college setting, but I found it better for me personally to set boundaries by using GroupMe. That way, if athletes send me a message at an absurd time or on the weekend when I'm off, I can get to it on Monday or the next business hour and not have it in my iMessage notification. See, that's nice. (laughs) So it's more so about boundaries for me. So... My, one of my last jobs, we, my football team had a huddle, uh-huh. um, which was really nice because they didn't just use it for like film and stuff, but they also yeah. used the message portion of it. Uh-huh. And they had each individual person on a, like a big group message uh-huh. that anyone could message. And then they also had, you could like each individually message them. So I didn't have to give my number out at all. Like not a single person on that team except for concussions. I think none of them had my personal number, nice, which was really nice. And they, they could not call me through it though. Oh yeah. Yeah. The only other bugaboo that I had with that was, um, some of them didn't check their huddle of course not so when i was trying to reach out to them like that was a little bit annoying um and sometimes like huddle would be down and so like you know you get those kind of things but i think this story about having the group me is so cool with for the for the admin to set that up for each team yeah um because i used to just in the huddle, I used to just send out announcements. Yeah, and I was gonna say that's that's the nice part because like at my my previous spot, you know, pretty much everything ran through what WhatsApp. So the team, like each team, kind of did their own group message and like whatever platform they wanted. But um, you know, one of my teams, they were all in WhatsApp. So if I had announcements for the team or like updates for the team, there was that. Obviously, the international athletes, it was easier to message them that way. Right. Uh, but then also, um our admin had a group message on, oh, yeah. on I remember WhatsApp, that. which was really convenient because then it was really nice and easy to kind of get in contact with everybody. My team uses Remind. Oh, nice. But it's not the same as like 
it, it's like a one way. It's not really like a group me where it's like a two way. What? Or a Google voice. Remind like the coaches set it up so like the coach could send out. I've heard of people using that for athletic training too. Like uh-huh. athletic training hours are gonna be this. Uh huh. Um so it's like a it's like an announcement kind of. Oh. Okay. But there's no text back. You no one can text back. Oh, nice. Okay, that's interesting. Or maybe it's a I've setting. Never, I've never, never been I've never been on the on the other side. I just um, hey, here's your second work oh, okay. story. Here we go. You want to read it? This one's by Joe C. Coaches, colleagues, and additional admin, i.e. facilities, athletic director, and other important personnel get my personal cell. Those that have my personal have strict instructions to never give it out. See, that's important. Yes. That is very important. They are instructed to give my work cell if they feel like they don't know which one to give. I then have a work cell phone that I pay for best thing I've ever done. It's a much older iPhone that does the basics. That's all it needs to do. Right. All of my athletes get access to. None of my athletes get my personal cell phone. Parents. I don't talk to them unless I get an okay from students. And they only get my work cell. When I cover per diem, I give my work cell. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, huh. that's a good idea. Yeah, so, I mean, it's doable. It is doable. It's a good idea. I wonder how many schools, like, either have a work phone for their staff or help pay for your phone. That's the next story. Oh, look at that. Um, But, yeah, I've heard of some people who've had a work phone. Yeah. And then, really, you can just, like, leave it home if you're going to go somewhere that, you know, you're not at work. Exactly. That is one thing that I feel like when we were talking to Ned Bergert from the Angels, didn't he touch upon that when he was working? They didn't have cell phones, so you didn't have immediate access. Yes. But now. Yeah. But he was talking about that, like how, like for a lot of his career, right? They didn't really have cell phones. Right. So. Right. There was actually Changes a chance it, to disconnect. For real. Like. Yeah. For the professional level, 100% that yeah. changes mm-hmm. things, not being able to have access to someone. Yeah, big time. Um, so our next one um, that we kind of hinted at already yes. is from Maddie S. She said, working at the D1 level, you literally don't have a choice whether or not to give out your phone number. They also took away the work phone option, but they do offer to pay your phone bill. It was weird at first, but you get used to it. And you just got to be good at setting boundaries. Same with social media. They make it kind of standard for everyone. Like there's so much social media involvement with promotions and highlights, etc. I'm pretty sure all the athletes use Finstas. And I block them from seeing seeing my daily stories so I can have some privacy. Nice. Um, th- that actually too, I've totally, totally forgot about that. But I feel like now, like my two co-workers give out their phone number. So... Obviously, I feel like following suit. Yeah. You know, it's it's just kind of... And I did ask a question about this, um, but I think people were a little confused. I think the... the um, I think I worded it wrong. Yeah. Um, but I did ask, if you have coworkers, are the boundaries you set with the coaches and athletes same or different than your coworkers? Uh-huh. I actually meant like... Like... Are you on the same page? Right. Of boundaries. So like if I'm not available when I get home or is my coworker also not available when when they get yeah. home or, you know, is it different? But I, then we got a lot of people messaging back saying like, oh, well, my coworkers a lot of times that are like my friends. So, you know, I don't mind if we get a little work talk or like whatever. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I think this is a little bit confusing, but... <laughs> So that one's skewed. Yes, I would say that one's a little skewed based on interpretation. Right, right. After I I got like a few messages about it, I was like, hmm, I think I'm going to exclude this question. (laughs) So we kind of hinted at social media, but we're actually not going to go into that just yet. Um, Now, specifically, I asked, when are you available to be reached by athletes or coaches? The majority of people said, 46% said it's limited both for athletes and coaches so they're not available 24 7 
Um, we did get a 25, 25 split, um, any time by coaches and limited for athletes and then any time by athletes or coaches. So about a quarter of the people yeah. say like they're 24 seven, about almost 50% of people say they are limited. They are not 24 seven. Another quarter said, um, any time by the coaches, um, but the athletes are the ones that they limit. Yeah. And then 5% were actually the opposite where they said the athletes could contact them anytime. Probably I'm assuming for injuries. Yeah. Um, but the coaches were actually limited. I, I man, I was kind of thinking about it. I feel like sometimes that's like, I, I, like I'd say the athletes, like if they really need something, they can always reach out. But I feel like for the coaches, unless it's like a pressing need, like that's, that's a tomorrow. Right. Ask. Which is actually, which is why I was kind of surprised that we only got 5% for, Anytime for athletes, limited for coaches. Yeah. Yeah. No, because half the time, the texts or the messages I'd get from coaches literally could wait till tomorrow. Absolutely. There is not a, there was never an an answer (laughs) that we needed right now. Like, I could, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. Okay. So we did get a couple of stories for this. Okay. Rebecca R said, for emergencies, anytime I'm available for guidance. For non-emergencies, after I've left campus around 8 p.m. is normal cutoff. My time is my time. College AT gives a lot of leeway for communication, so I really have to draw boundaries, especially being a mom of almost Irish twins. (laughs) We do ourselves, coaches and athletes, a world of disservice to be available 24-7. Educate and teach this generation to be self-sufficient, but also be a guide for them. I do also tell them sometimes, I'm going to text you late, but just like you shouldn't expect an answer from me after 8 p.m., I don't expect a response from you. Fair enough. Yeah. I know. I really liked that perspective. It was like, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm going to do it too, but I respect your time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just like I expect you to respect my time. Yeah. I'd say so. Right. And honestly, most of the time I feel like most people have their phones on silent or like vibrate. Yeah. Um. I also like always on silent. <laughs> right. I also noticed that um, a lot of my athletes, like a lot of them have their phones on do not disturb like all day long. You know, I've noticed that lately too. I feel like that's a, like a new thing that people yeah. are. It's kind of Maybe because nice. like the focus mode is so much easier to like. Yeah. There are so many different things, but. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is. I like the mark is on red feature. Because then I can decide when yeah. when I want to get to it, you know? I think it's too confusing to determine. Like, as I'm sure a lot of people do, if I have a thought, it is going to escape me if I don't act on that thought currently. Yeah. And it might be two weeks before I remember that thought again. So, like, if I have, if someone texts me and I don't, respond or yeah. like if i open it and read it probably not going to get to it yeah. unless like i have something that brings me back to it but the same thing is like if i need to ask someone something it's probably not going to happen if yeah. i don't set a reminder to text them in the morning or if i don't text them like right at that second. yeah yeah for sure because we've we're busy we got so many other things going on you know just a little bit just just a little sometimes bit. <laughs> So I I really like this next one from Sika G. She said, I tell coaches and athletes that they can call or text me whenever, but that my do not disturb goes on from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. So there's no guarantee I will respond during those hours. If there is an emergency and they need to get a hold of me during those hours, like when we're traveling as a team, they know to call me twice in a row. It's a setting you can have on. If you turn on allow repeated calls, then the same number calls twice within three minutes. It will override the do not disturb. Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And I think I've heard of this, but I've never actually had anyone like enact on it. Yeah. Um, we had a couple people who told me about this, um, but it was actually um, like in the context of having like telling that to athletes like, hey, like in an emergency, like just yeah. call me twice. Yeah. It's kind of a cool thing to actually like yeah. have set. That is really cool. I see, like, that all sounds really cool. Like, that do not serve. I'm like, oh, man, that'd be really cool. But, like, I haven't really been had a situation where, like, 
it's gotten like too much where I've had to tell athletes like, bro, right, stop. So I feel exactly. like I, I don't exactly. need the do not disturb, even though it sounds really cool. Right. Like, I don't think I've ever had that many people. First of all, I don't have that many people text me anyways. So, like, I've never really needed, like, man, just all these messages. Right, right. I do if I'm really trying to get something done. Yeah. If I get distracted, then it's game oh, over. Oh, it's, it's game, game over. over. Game over. <laughs> if anything, the only time, like, I really get a lot of messages is, like, like our Instagram notifications mm-hmm. when you're... Um, trying to get stories yeah when you're responding to people oh yeah it's like i get them but i can't read them right i'm like don't look (laughs) that is another thing um i think i say this on the podcast a lot but i don't think you guys realize like i purposefully leave them sitting so i get all the messages at once because otherwise what happens is i respond to a message and i really like what the story is and i'll be like oh yes i'm so excited about this and i forget what the story is i put in the episode and then I later realize all the stories that I said yes to and I like look back and there's like three stories that are exactly the same. Oh. And then I'm like, oh man, I probably shouldn't have done that. (laughs) But your guys' stories are just so good. It's like really great. Yeah. But that's another thing, like setting boundaries for the podcast for us. Yeah. Because we we always talk about, you know, what is work-life balance as athletic trainers for an athletic training podcast yeah. and we're both athletic trainers so it's just how does that and doing a doctorate <laughs> in athletic, athletic training. training how does that work how do we do all of it i don't know i don't know it it's, sounds like so it sounds like my life yeah yes we're so like, this is what i do day in day out right we have boundaries we and we're, we're going to talk about this on vacation but like our vacations are literally do like go out off the grid and no you can't contact me at all we have no cell service so (laughs) that's the do not disturb (laughs) function yeah it's not by choice our phone literally has no choice it's on sos mode it's on sos when do you answer emails mostly at work if there's a pressing email or one that because this one happens often one that i'm like oh i need to respond to that and then i'm leaving i'm like dang it, I didn't respond to it, mm-hmm. then I'll respond to it. Um, But most of the time it's on the, I don't know, especially because like on the on the phone, right, everyone knows it's your mobile. Right, because half time it says like if you're on Outlook, it says like get Outlook for iOS. You know you can change that, right? I know, but see, now I have to do that, right? Now I have to go do that. No, I changed mine right, so it's exactly a, the same, thing. so you can't tell if it's coming then, from my phone. And then... The phone doesn't have the signature. Like, you know, no, the fancy no, signature. No, that's what I'm saying. You, you can, can set it you for can the phone, put too? Your, you can put your signature. No, well, no, I shouldn't do that because then I <laughs> will be like, respond. No. no. I mean, no, you can't do that. Yeah. See? No. Respond to emails. Yeah, that's one thing. It's like, oh, man, I, everyone's going to know it's from the phone. Right. I, I, I worked hard on that signature. I want the signature to be there. No. No, the signature is important, but you it can. Is. It's really nice. Um, logos and all so i did ask this 52 percent of people actually said both they answer e- emails at home and at work yeah 44 percent of people said only at work and then four percent were other rebecca r said only from my boss do i answer an email after hours that's fair enough mm-hmm. like i said it de- depends you know it depends on what what the email is some people don't have push notifications for their emails which I respect, but for <laughs> I me, I would miss so many emails. <laughs> I know, me too. Like, I email is not the first thing that I that I do when I get into work. Sometimes it is, but it's not. It's like I'm not. I don't really like email, so it's not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Um. So if I get push notifications and I see something's coming in, then I'm like, oh, I got to do that when I get to work. Yeah. And then when I sit down, I'm like, oh, wait, I think there's something I had to do. Here it is. It's unread. <laughs> See, it just makes sense. I agree. That does make sense. You want to read the next one? Yes, this, this is kind of like what you were saying. Yes, this one's by Ann S. They can e- email me anytime. I'll usually read the email, 
Decide if it's pressing, and if it's not, respond the next time I'm quote-unquote on the clock. The coaches and a few parents that have my personal number usually don't abuse it. Occasionally, I'll get a text when I'm not at work, but for the most part, I initiate conversations via text. I also recently got a quote-unquote work number through an app called Snap Mobile. So that lets me text and call without giving them my personal number. I've never heard of Snap Mobile. Neither have I. I feel like most people are like Google Voice, WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, what's that other one we just talked about? Group, Group me. me. Yeah, see? Yeah, just you filter the email. Is it pressing? Exactly, now? exactly. Okay, but here's the thing too, is also why I switched from, because when I didn't give out my, my cell phone number, everyone has my email. And so... Well, you can find the email. Right, right. All the athletes would either email me or they would call my work phone which i first of all i'm never at my desk so i'm not gonna answer my work phone does anyone really ever use their work phone it's a great question i'm trying to think like i'm like when do i i, I try to like i try to actually physically use my mm-hmm. work phone when i'm calling numbers mm-hmm. or hey sometimes like i get fancy and i just hit the extensions for within campus calls <laughs> i feel cool um i have like the benefit that my two co-heads have been there like way longer than I have, so people are going to call them before they call me most of the time. Nope, not anymore. I'm going to start calling. Okay. I'm going I'm well, not... to blow up that office phone. Not going to answer it, so. You're going to see a call from my, from my school's area code, and you're going to know. It's me. You know what? I don't actually know. I've never, actually, I've been a year at my new job. I don't think I've answered my phone once. Oh, uh, we're changing that. I don't Hopefully, think it's well. First of all, I just got it recently, so it hasn't run. It hasn't. Yeah, the phone. It really? wasn't. Yeah, because they added my position, so it wasn't. That there wasn't a phone for that like position. Like, so they just gave it to you recently. Um, no, probably about like six months ago. Okay, so still. like no one, no one knows that I have a work phone. Still, uh, but I do now. <laughs> also, by the way, speaking of difficulty work phone situations, uh, my work phone, the extension. So again, like I work in a separate facility from our other athletic training facility. Mm-hmm. But so like the office and the other athletic training facility, like I share it with oh. one of my coworkers. Our work phone there is the same extension as my work phone. In the gym athletic training room. So sometimes when you call that extension, both of our phones do ring. Uh-huh. And there have been times that I've seen it, and it's like from another school that we're playing football that weekend, and I know, oh, that's not Don't for me. Don't answer that. Yeah. Right. That one's not mine. Hmm. Or like, hey, it'll ring, and I'll answer. They're like, oh, we're looking for this person. I'm like, just call back again. See, here, see, when that's happening, I email that athletic trainer, and I'm like, here's my cell phone. Call me. Yeah, it works. That works. I mean, a lot of times I know it's usually the right. within campus call because obviously I'm going to see a number. I'm like, oh. oh, you know what? No, I did. My boss does call me through that phone. Nice. No, he doesn't. He calls my cell phone. Oh, weird. I'm trying to remember. I Okay, here's here's why I was thinking about it. Because I'm trying to remember if how I would answer the phone. Like, I'm going to call you and see how you, are you professional when you answer the phone? Uh yeah, if it's not like, like how do you, like how do you like answer? if it's if it's like ring 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 ring. Okay, if it's just no, a I'm random ring, number, I, is this a random number? Do I know this number? No. At that time, this is Randy. See, I don't know if I'd remember that because it's been literally a probably a year. But since most of the time, I've again, answered... the people that are calling my phone, like, it's either it's either. <laughs> my coworkers <laughs> in the other athletic training room so uh-huh. i'm not gonna hit them with that i'm just like hey <laughs> or if it's the division office uh-huh. again i'm just like hey what's up linda <laughs> like i don't need to hit them with the athletic training room this is randy you should Get all right next time my next actually next time my coworkers call <laughs> um athletic training room, this is randy that's how i used to answer my last phone uh, that's the nice way to do it Mm-hmm. didn't you call me one time when i you were trying to catch me off yeah i, I still was. did it right you did it okay so i thought <laughs> yeah yeah check that one yeah but like hey but you know what 
So, but here's the thing: is like, hold on, hold on. You are you're skipping past the fact that I am now going to blow up your office phone for like the next two weeks. But um, I hope my calls actually make it because every time I email (laughs) you from my work, it goes into like email quarantine. Yeah, I don't get it for months. For months, (laughs) we played them. Multiple times. You play us in every sport for for like my sports. And I always send a nice welcome email. Mm-hmm. And the game game's long gone. Like that finished up months ago <laughs> and they just got it like last week. Yep. I don't understand why I don't know. my emails I, I, there's it's a dot edu email. I don't know. We got your coworkers emails. Like this is fun. not a scam. Both of them actually. It just doesn't like me. No. So I don't know who I need to talk to to get my email out of the the like no email list. I don't know. I can't even add you to my address book or anything. No. Okay. <laughs> I I'm told not... it don't quarantine you, but apparently they don't care. Even the CDC updated their quarantine guidelines and my email's still stuck <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so going back, um, what are your thoughts on social media and athletes slash coaches? Fifty nine percent said connections only after they leave slash graduate uh yes that that's basically what i used to be but like i'm never on social media so i have a lot do of people rec- actually know what your social media is i feel some like of them do really but some of them find out how eventually i guess your coworkers tag you yeah right yeah probably from that and plus it's the coolest name ever okay it is anywho um, so I do have a lot of requ- a lot of requests in there, but I'm never like on social media. Literally, the only time I'm on social media would be the AT Corner Instagram. Hey, um, someone who we know has requested you, and you message them all the time, and you're not following them, or like they don't, you don't allow them to follow you. Did you know that? Yeah, we can fix it. <laughs> I, oh, but again, see, that's my reason. I'm not. I'm not on there, so I haven't even seen they, it. They were gonna. They were asking how long it would take for you to notice, and it's probably been about a year. Okay, so we can't play that. That how long is Randy gonna <laughs> notice game? Because you put something on my laptop one time, on the front page that said, "Read me," and it, <laughs> it went. It sat there. What six months? Four months? Ah, uh, less than that, I think. Okay, it sat there forever. Before we finally opened it, <laughs> so we can't we can't play that game, right? Well, I guess I'll have to fix that. Um, only twenty one percent of people said they connect with coaches, but not with athletes. Yeah, again, I mean, there are some coaches, yeah, that I, I believe have requested me. Fourteen percent say connect with athletes and coaches on social media. Six percent zero connections at all. Hey man, one hey, you, you don't you deal with them eight hours, eight plus hours a day. Why do you want to deal with them on the outside? Right. So I have a professional Instagram that I use for most of my. I feel like that's popular now. I feel like that's what people do. Mm-hmm. They have their professional account and their personal account. Mm-hmm. I always forget to post on my professional account though. <laughs> Not cool. I have lately. Well, you also manage a lot of social medias. I have boundaries on my social media. I'm not a very good social media. I know. Well, I would disagree. I think you're really good at it. Thanks. If you wonder why our social media looks so good, it is definitely not because of me. My my. If you get a comment, though, it's from this guy. Fair enough. I was going to say, the extent of my involvement is usually liking things (laughs) or responding to a comment. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't usually comment unless it's like yeah. some exciting news. I feel like every time we open our Instagram, someone's doing something exciting. So I'm like, oh, congrats! Yeah, if it's a congrats. It's probably from me. Yeah, or from both yeah. of us. Yeah, if it's if you're getting yeah if you're getting like comment like that, it might be coming from. If you get one that says LOL at the end, it's from him definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that unique to me? It just is. LOL's the thing. You're laughing out loud. Oh. So Alex S says, <laughs> <laughs> LOL. I only connect if the athletes and coaches connect with me first, depending on if I like the person. 
Nine times out of ten, fair. I do not connect with coaches. We never know how our patients feel about us, if they want us to have a view into their personal lives or keep it strictly professional. Only having the athlete having control over that prevents a breach of privacy slash trust. I'm sure we all have folks that want nothing to do with us but to return to sport. Yeah, no, I'd say that. They just kind of want to have that interaction of just, am I good to go? Cool. Right. And that's the extent. Just think of like when you were in college, if there was even a coach, like if you had a coach, because not everyone likes their coaches. That's very true. <laughs> like imagine if your coach was just like creeping on your personal social media. I feel like that's just, it's honestly up to the athlete. I feel like our relationship yeah. is a lot different than like a coach athlete but also some coach athletes are really close yeah but also too like on the on the flip side like again it it all does depend like on how the relationship is and how the athlete feels uh but also like from like my standpoint like i I, I don't know some of your life choices i don't know if i want to see your social media life choices i definitely don't watch their stories (laughs) that's for sure even then sometimes what they just post just on the just regular post, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to know. Yeah, yeah. Courtney P says, I got an Instagram account so I wouldn't have to give out my phone number, but the kids could still reach me if needed. Oh, okay. I didn't post anything on there that didn't relate to athletes slash athletic training slash medical stuff. I think it worked really well. I could send the kids ideas for exercises and training at any mm. time. Didn't have to wait to see them in person, and didn't have to give out my number. Not allowed to do it anymore in my new position. But they want me to get out my cell number. I don't understand it, but oh well. Yeah. yeah eh, just that uh, that emoji. Yep. Uh, oh. uh. Yep. Now, that's kind of a good idea about the exercises thing. It's kind of neat. It's kinda yeah, I really like that idea cool. too. I mean, this is kind of like the idea between like a, like behind a professional account. Right. Right. So yeah, that's kind of cool. That's a that's kind of an interesting way to think about it. On my professional account, I used to not add athletes, but I think when my coworkers started adding athletes. And then it's like, well, the athletes start adding them. Yeah. And then they add me and then they're like, well, why? Yeah. You know? Hey. Right. I think it's just like, it's dependent on the situation. Yeah, for and, sure. And of course, like, I'm not messaging on there. I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm literally just posting my professional activities. Yeah. And then, honestly, like. And I connect with all my sport teams, which I don't connect with on my uh, personal account. Yeah. Actually, honestly, the origin story of my professional account was so when I was at work and I would be like scrolling through Instagram, I used to only follow like rehab accounts. Nice. Or like work related things. Yeah. So then when I would like go feel like I needed to scroll, like I could at least be like productive scrolling like at work instead of like scrolling on instagram you know yeah i feel that so i used to not connect with anyone yeah which then i felt awkward and guilty because like people would follow me and i'd not follow them back (laughs) yeah i could see that being kind of like oh kind of awkward most of the time now if i don't follow people back it's because literally i don't go on that account so oops sorry i missed it oh yeah see that's what happens to me (laughs) I'm, i'm never on my account right so just saying it's it's Literally, I just haven't seen it yet. Right. I wonder how many requests I'm at to now. I don't know. That's yeah, a good question. Yeah. So, we got an also very interesting point from Audric W. He talks about, because we are talking about like coaches and athletes. He has a business. Yes. Audric says, when you have a business, it's different as social media is marketing. And unlike other settings, visibility matters and client numbers matter as do tangible results. They can contact me. My rule is that it's up to me if I choose to respond. They don't have complete access to me, nor do they own my time. They respect that my family and personal time comes first. So they are free to contact me, but it's on me if I choose to respond right away. If not, I give it 24 hours to get back to them. It's a good point, especially like, yeah, being kind of like, you know, your own business, your own practice. So that is actually 100% why I would never want to go into um, like a personal business of athletic training because I don't know if I could set boundaries. Yeah. 
Like, I think I would be working 24-7. Yeah. Like, actually working. Like, even with the podcast, I feel like we are working working 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. It's a way of life. <laughs> yes. But it's rewarding. It honestly is. It honestly is. It's, it's a cool experience, for sure. Right. So, I think it's... I don't know. It's, it's obviously what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So switching gears a little bit, going on to setting boundaries with people. Okay. Do you think it's harder to set boundaries with new coaches or existing coaches? 82% of people. I would almost say existing. 82% of people said existing. Yeah, I'd say existing because you're going into a situation. So they're probably accustomed to one thing. No, I mean saying like the coaches that have you've already been working with for a while. Is oh, it? I took it as like going in like you're the new one and the coaches have been there. That's how I took it. Oh, well, however you take it, 82% of yeah. people agree with you existing. Cause what I, 18% what I, of people said it's harder to set boundaries with new coaches. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Um, we got one person that said it's the same text, just different font. It's the same battle for boundaries, just different. Educating the boundaries to newbies versus breaking existing coaches' habits. Not sure I'd say one is harder than the other as both require a little extra work. Yeah. True. That is one thing is like once you get to know your coaches and you're like, oh, I know how far or the coaches actually most likely are going to be the ones who are like, I know how far I could push you. Yeah. Or like I know which coaches that I've worked with that, you know, will negotiate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I know you're going to end up listening to me because you know, you're going to err on the side of safety. Yeah. Colleen C said in quotes, that's not how our old trainer did things or I'll just ask insert name instead or AT shopping to see if a coworker gives an answer they like better. I've made sure that we are all on the same page as a staff. Talked about policies that we kept the same across the department and ideas that we can individualize. Then we made sure not to let them pit us against each other. When someone said, I want to ask you what you would do for this injury or athlete. Oh my goodness. Our staff members would ask if that person has spoken to their AT and what they were told. Then say, that is probably what they should do. Having a group of ATs that you trust... And that have your back makes the situation easier. It does. That's very true. Mm-hmm. It and makes a world of difference. Right. Because that's true. And well, if mom says no, well, I'm going to ask dad. Right. Because they're going to keep doing that. Oh, yeah. Especially if they know it uh, uh, has shown to be entertained. or like Right. right. I, and unwillingly, too. It's not like people are being malicious behind each other's right, back. It's right. just if they know it might succeed. Hopefully not. Yeah. If they know it might succeed, they're going to keep, all right, hey, I might have an opportunity here. Right, right. So lastly, we get to take a vacation. Burp, 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 burp. Well, I guess the first one's not a vacation. The first <laughs> one, the first one's just travel. When you are traveling, who are you spending your time with? Nine times out of ten, it was by myself. Really? Outside of outside of like doing treatments and like at dinner time when like the team ate, uh huh. Right, yeah. Sometimes you you would go to because like when we traveled, a lot of times we went to like a place that had multiple places to eat, uh-huh. and they're like, go. Right. So yeah, some athletes would go to where I would be going, but then most of the time I just kind of got my food and I kind of left, or I'd go sit somewhere and the athletes would go do whatever they want. Right. 38% of people said coaches. 32% of people said coaches and athletes. 8% said athletes. 22% said neither. I explore independently. So Maddie S. agrees with you and says, <laughs> I demand alone time. Being an introvert, I get so exhausted being around such a big group all day. So I relish in having a room to myself, notes at the wine bar, finding trail runs, and coffee shops. I'll sit at the bar downstairs and do notes. I've also gone to get drinks with coaches. I don't care that the athletes see me drinking a glass of wine, but I won't let them sit with me. Nice. Which also begs the question, what are your boundaries on drinks? Uh, If it's a work trip, I don't. That's what what, uh, 42% of people said. Yeah, I I just, I mean, 
it's a work trip. The lines are blurred as far as what's work and what's off. Right, right. I I just don't like it. I just that for me, I just don't know. Especially mm-hmm. cuz like also too like you know when you're on the road, an emergency can pop up at any time mm-hmm. and they have access to you. So I, I want to at least feel that I'm in a prepared situation, even when it's 10 o'clock at night and they knock on my door with, I think I have lice, <laughs> right? I won't be able to be ready to handle that situation. So I, yeah, when it was a work trip, I I never did. Right. That's what, um, actually these two stories that I, that I pulled, um, this anonymous one, when I worked at a D2 and would travel, I drank once in a while with the coaches, but quickly realized if the coaches were drinking and something happened to an athlete, I'd be the one taking care of them. It was hard because the coaches would try to get me to drink with them as much as I wanted to. I was quick to point out that if they were under the influence and one of the athletes got sick or injured in their room, who would be the first person to help? Me. So they backed (laughs) off, but I think the coaches took offense to it. Yeah. Which is a bummer. Yeah. I mean... Justin N. um, real quick said, It's a horrible look if someone calls me with really bad abdominal pain or some emergency in the middle of the night and I go to the room smelling like booze under my breath. Yeah. I mean, that was, yeah, that was my thought process behind it. And you know what? If, if coaches are going to get that like butthurt about it, it's like, dude, like really? Right. Like clearly it's not like, no, I don't want to hang out with you. It's just literally this reason. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's, Again, it's up to you. And also, here's the thing is like, ahead of time, you should be determining when your hours are. Like, are yeah. you on call for emergency? Yeah. Like, for this team trip? Yeah. Like, obviously, like, emergency is going to be 911 anyway, but are you going to be involved in that? Because if so, then, you know, your answer might change. Yeah. Um. But yeah, 43% of people said they drink only around the coaches. Um. Six people actually said they drink with people, but uh, only people who are not on the trip. So, oh, okay. like, let's say if they're going to yeah, yeah. somewhere that they know people, like, they might yeah. go go off. And then 10% said no boundaries as long as I say professional. You know, like, it's funny you bring that up because, like, I've known people to do that, like, when they travel on a trip. Like, oh, whoever's there, they'll go, like, like uh-huh. if they have someone in town, like, oh, they'll go visit them. And I'm like, yeah, that's, like, really cool. I'd, like, to do that, too. But it's, like... It is so hard because it's not like it you really have your is. own vehicle. Right. And also, by the time everything's done, I've cleaned up and treatments are done, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> right. Right. Especially because I have to wake up in the morning mm-hmm. because I'm probably going with the first group anyways, and they're leaving at like 8 a.m. Right. I'm in bed. Right. They don't leave a lot of downtime for no. a reason. Yeah, for a reason. For a reason. We, we don't need the athletes getting in trouble. Nah. Um, so switching gears again, kind of, um, now we're talking specifically when you are on vacation, how much are you working? We already kind of answered this. Yeah. None. (laughs) Yeah. I'm trying to think like, again, I mean, we are in usually areas that don't have great service. Right. And so usually when I'm go when I would go on vacation, I let people know like, Hey, like, I mean, obviously you have your responder, um, but like I would be available, especially when like I was like the head, like I will be available as far as like, like I may not be able to respond right away, but Mm -hmm. you can still reach me and I will at some point get to you. Right. Like for most of the problems, hey, go to this person. Mm -hmm. But of course there's going to be something that I'm at least going to need to know about. Right. And I would respond accordingly. If it was like, hey, just here's an update. Right. But if it was like, oh, this is a more pressing thing, okay, then I, I might pay attention to it. Right. 38% of people actually still answer texts and phone calls. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 40% of people said they're completely unavailable. I do not talk to you. Like Chris C., he said, if, you're, if you answer anything work-related, then you're working. That's true. If they can't respect your time and being intentional with your family slash PTO, conversation has to be had. That's fair enough. Exactly. Exactly. True. Again, that bleeding over is, and if it's expected a response, yeah. it's one thing if people don't know that you're on vacation. Yeah. But if they're expecting you to work on your vacation, that's the whole, you. Nah, dog. No. Nah. That's a nah, dog for me. No. 
Do you want to read the next one? Yes. So the next one's by Courtney P. I think it depends on the athlete slash coach and the situation. If I'm following up with a post-op or there's an injury, I want to know about it. But if it's just regular questions, I can wait until I I can get back. Yeah, it's kind of like enough. the screening. Yeah. Yeah, again, I think it's it's so just it depends. <laughs> That's so much of this episode, you know. Yeah, I think it just yeah, it just kind of depends on the situation. Marissa says, "I'm not reaching out to anyone, but I am willing to respond if someone reaches out." Especially because I only take vacation while they're on vacation. So I don't have anyone filling in for me. I'll do concussion check-ins or kids asking to update their rehab during the break so they don't lose progress or miss out on extra days. But like I said, I'm not sending them reminders or trying to track them down on my time off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. Right. I think that's the end of our stories. Oh, nice. Do you have anything else to add about boundaries? Um, no, I feel like it's just, yeah, it's really up to kind of what works for you and just like kind of setting that tone. Like, Mm -hmm. like I started like a while ago, I started like if I got a message or like, like a text or an email, like you remember, like if my, it was late at night, my phone would buzz. Yeah, that's tomorrow problem. I didn't see it. Oh yeah. I remember that. I didn't see it till I woke up next morning. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. If they text me at like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, what's the difference if I'm sleeping or if I'm not? If I didn't see it, I didn't see it. I'm asleep. But here's the thing for me. I wouldn't be able to sleep. Because <laughs> once true. I hear the buzz, I'm like, who is it? What do they need? Because I'm awake. I just want to know. Even though I'm not going to respond. You were very surprised. I just want to know. You how, were very surprised. How do you just go to sleep yeah. without looking? Yeah. You, I think it would concern you more than it concerned me. <laughs> Like you got a text. You'd look at me and be like, "You you got a text." I'm like, oh, that's a tomorrow problem. You're like, you don't want to know who it is. You, you don't I'm like. No. What if it's one of your friends? No, I will see it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see it in the morning. I'm like, but I want to know. Yeah. I'm just gonna sit here and be like, well, what if it's like a funny story, or what if it's? And it'll be funny tomorrow. But I want funny now. <laughs> But yeah, I honestly doing that was great. And it just really kind of set the tone for what I do now. That's great. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. Like I said, like I don't need coaches giving me questions at 8 o'clock at night that they can wait till tomorrow. Like, I will give you your answer. Just it didn't need to be right now. Right. That is one thing that we do really well where I work cause, because we split everything it's like coaches aren't just going to text one of us they're going to text all three of us that's nice and so it's like well whoever either none of us respond if it's like we all respond (laughs) um no more like yeah time wise yeah like if someone's in the atr they'll be the one to take the head on it yeah you know and then coaches don't have to be like who's in tomorrow morning yeah or you know yeah for sure that's all we got so if you guys are new we do every other episode as education or stories this one was a story episode next week we're going back to our education we have a CU episode thank you to athletic training chat and and clinically pressed Um, so we're super excited to roll those out keep an eye out next week I believe it's on our new concussion bridge statement that's right it's the the concussion bridge statement we're going to talk about the update Sweet. Excited about that. And then um, if you guys missed submitting a story for this episode, you can submit a story on our Instagram. Usually beginning midweek, I post the stories in our Instagram stories or I post the prompts, I mean. Um, But yeah, or you can email us at atcornards at gmail.com. I don't know why I did that backwards, (laughs) but um, yeah. And then... uh, Keep an eye out for CUs. We have MedBridge CUs. Um, if you're interested in that, AT Corner will get you $150 off. It's good for a year. Check everything else in the show notes. And yeah, signing off. Thank you for helping us showcase athletic training behind the tape. Bye. <laughs>